In this video, I'll talk a little bit about the internal resistance of LiPo battery packs and show you a very easy way to do this with commonly available instruments like a watt meter and 12 volt halogen bulbs and the significance of the internal resistance of uh, LiPo and other batteries. Battery internal resistance is the resistance to the actual current that the battery produces in a chemical reaction, but that the resistance occurs inside the pack itself. And that internal resistance uh, starts at a baseline and invariably increases with time. It gets worse with crashes, with overheating, over discharge, age, and other forms of abuse and use. Now why internal resistance is important is because one, when it goes up, the ability of the battery to deliver the voltage that you need to operate your aircraft goes down. And we experience that as voltage sag. So if you've ever noticed you have an oldish battery, it's a little puffy, a little overused. When you punch the power, it just doesn't give the RPMs that it used to or what you expect. And that's due to an increased internal resistance. Another thing measuring the internal resistance allows us to do is to get around the maximum C discharge rate that all LiPos come with. And, you know, I've often wondered, what does that really mean? This is a 40C and this is a 45C. What happens beyond that? Do they blow up? Do they puff? Do the wires melt? Does the voltage sag below a certain level? Who really knows? There's really no industry standard, and it's just the kind of rating that will make the, even the most honest manufacturers biased to want to buff that number up a bit, whereas internal resistance is something that you and I can actually measure. Another good use for the internal resistance is to measure the ongoing life uh, health of your batteries. You can measure it when you get them new and then as you go. It's also somewhat useful to compare different brands of batteries when you use the uh, normalized measurement that I'll show you in the spreadsheet a little bit later in the video, wherein you can measure the internal resistance of two brand new batteries, even of uh, different capacities and different cell counts, and do a pretty close to apples to apples comparison uh, at a 1C discharge rate, a calculated normalized discharge rate, and kind of tell uh, which battery has a lower internal resistance per cell from the get-go and as time goes on. So I'll show you a way you can measure the internal resistance per cell at a roughly uh, industry standard 1C discharge rate with a, a test load that actually more mimics uh, actual uses. I use a 100 watt test load, one, because it's closer to normal use, and two, it gives better resolution in the voltage drop than trying to attempt to do it at exactly 1C discharge rate. So have a look at this demonstration. I think you'll find it very easy to do, and I would encourage you to test your own batteries, keep a little spreadsheet, and uh, keep a comparison, and you'll, you'll see that you can actually begin to predict objectively with a number rather than just kind of feeling the puffiness of a battery. You can actually tell when the battery is ready to get trashed or sent to a secondary purpose uh, or um, you can keep using it. This will be a quick and easy demonstration on measuring the internal resistance of a LiPo battery pack. The internal resistance of a battery pack is the resistance that paradoxically occurs even though the battery produces current, it also creates resistance to that current. Internal resistance not only steals some of the power from your power plant, but it also accounts for the voltage drop that you see as amps are drawn off by your power plant. And therefore, with an aging battery or poor quality battery, you'll notice that the voltage drop off is more and more extreme as time goes on. Some of the contributors to increasing internal resistance of a battery pack are regular use, the quality of the battery, the age of the battery as the internal resistance increases over time, any abuse, such as crashes or over-discharge of the batteries, will dramatically increase the internal resistance of the battery pack due to internal microscopic or visible damage. And because the battery pack produces its own voltage, we can't just simply hook up a multimeter and measure the resistance as we traditionally do with non-energized uh, circuits. We must use a subtractive uh, mathematical process measuring the current and voltage from the battery pack without a load that is not supplying current to anything and then supplying current to a load. And what I'm using for my test load are these 50 watt 12 volt halogen bulbs with the pin terminals that can be easily stabbed through a stranded wire of 14 AWG or greater in parallel here. So I've got one pin from each through the black wire and one pin from each through the white wire and it's simply epoxied to this piece of foam board to act as a stand to sit on the test surface. For battery packs other than three cell, these can be hooked up in series or series and parallel to provide the needed resistance. And of course you'll need the connector to match your watt meter so you can perform the actual test. In addition to the pack you're testing and the load, you also need a calculator and a watt meter. This is the Hobby King HK010 
power analyzer. Hobby King also does sell a dedicated uh, meter that measures internal resistance called the Mega Meter, but this is a cheap and simple way to measure your internal resistance of your batteries so you can monitor their health as their lifespan goes on. Because there are a number of variables which will affect the outcome of your internal resistance measurement, be cautious about comparing your outcomes with other people and with factory specs. Some of the variables that come into play are the temperature of your pack, the cell count, and the cell capacity, the lead length of your battery, the actual load that you use, again I'm using a 100 watt load here, and the test setup, which is all the leads, your particular uh, watt meter, uh, the length of the leads to the bulb, and so forth. The calculation of internal resistance goes like this. First we'll measure the unloaded voltage of this battery pack, then we'll measure the loaded voltage, which is to hook up the test load of 100 watts worth of 12 volt halogen bulbs, and divide that by the amperage under load. Multiply that by 1,000 to get milliohms, and that will get you the total internal resistance in milliohms. The SI abbreviation for amps is a capital I. I'll be writing out amps as to avoid confusion between the I for internal resistance. What I like to do is number all of my batteries and keep a spreadsheet as I go of those numbers. If you see the description link to the spreadsheet, you can actually plug in your own values and keep track of your own batteries. The measurement operation goes like this. I've got my number one pack plugged into the Hobby King watt meter and the watt meter mode enabled. And so what I'll do is record first my unloaded voltage, which is 12.53. Notice that the amp draw is negligible. And then I'm going to plug in the load and count a, a known interval of time, which I'll do for each of the packs. I like to use 10 seconds. That allows the voltage to stabilize. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, twelve point two seven volts at eight point seven amps. So the calculation for my number one pack goes like this. Here's the original formula. Here are the values plugged in. The unloaded voltage minus the loaded voltage over the amps times one thousand, giving twenty nine point eight eight milliohms total internal resistance for this three cell pack. I'm going to go ahead and test all the rest of my batteries and compare their internal resistance with their historical internal resistance and see which ones are still good to fly and which ones I might need to throw out. So after measuring the unloaded and loaded voltage and amperage of each of the batteries with the test load, you'll see that the loaded voltage varies somewhat between 12.27 down to 12 volts and below. Whether you use the method I've demonstrated here or a factory internal resistance checking device, it's a good idea to keep a log or spreadsheet of your results so you can track the health of your batteries throughout their lifespan. Here's a spreadsheet I keep on my Google Drive and there's also a shared version of this which is blank except for a few uh, fictional values that you can find in the link below and download for your own use. The data that I measure and keep track of and then the computations for it are the date of testing, and I like to keep track of the temperature, keep this constant as possible between the measuring sessions so you can get a good comparison, the name of the battery or brand, the numbering system that you use, the capacity of the batteries, these are 2200 milliamp hours, three cell, I use a 100 watt test load, that's two 50 watt 12 volt halogen bulbs. Here begins the actual test measurements. First the unloaded voltage, 12.53 volts, under a 100 watt load, delivering 12.27 volts, and the measured amperage of 8.7 amps. The calculated voltage drop here is 0.26 volts, and when divided by 8.7, and then multiplied by 1000 to get milliohms, yields 30 milliohms total internal resistance for this pack. This is uh, within the acceptable range for my personal uses, uh, over, over 30 milliohms in total internal resistance for the three cell pack such as these in the 50s and 60s tends to exceed my acceptable limits. These are batteries that get hot and puffy quickly. They don't deliver the power that is needed and these for my uses are relegated to some other secondary purpose such as FPV ground station. Now because the pack capacity and the voltage being tested are variables in the measurement of the internal resistance I provided additional computations on this spreadsheet to help make a better, though not perfect, comparison between packs with different 
capacities and different voltages. And I've called this the uh, tested discharge rate uh, at 1C, normalized, and also an additional column which factors in the cell count. These 4,000 milliamp hour packs tested with a 100 watt test load at approximately 7.6 amps is only 1.9 C discharge rate. The same uh, test load on a 2200 milliamp hour pack uh, is actually a 4C discharge rate. So you can see this isn't exactly an apples to apples comparison between these two packs with the same uh, test load. This column, the 1C discharge total normalized internal resistance, factors in the discharge rate as if it were done at 1C, so that we'll have a better comparison between packs of different capacities here. This 4000 milliamp hour sky lipo actually then turns out to have a, an apparently higher internal resistance at 1C than the 2200 milliamp hour nanotechs here, which are a bit lower. And then further to allow comparison between packs with different voltages or cell counts, this column divides the normalized internal resistance at 1C by the actual cell count, which we placed in this column. So 18 divided by 3 is 6. And so this gives the best possible uh, objective comparison between your packs if they have different cell counts and different capacities. It also happens to be the industry standard uh, test C discharge rating at 1C, although in real use uh, this doesn't mimic actual flying conditions, which is part of the reason I chose a 100 watt test load and not to try and mimic a 1C discharge rate with every single pack at different capacities and so forth. So with caution, you can consider comparing these within different packs of different capacities, different voltages in your collection, and with even more caution, uh, comparing it with other users and with factory specs. Here's a brand new batch of 10 Turnigy Nanotech uh, 2200 milliamp hours, which I've just tested. And it's noteworthy that the uh, 1C discharge rate normalized internal resistance per cell is in fact right about where they advertise uh, all of these under three milliohms uh, per cell as if it were tested at 1C. And so that's uh, pretty encouraging. Here you can see once upon a time I had a batch of Genzeus batteries which were great when new but towards the end of their lifespan you can see that the normalized 1C internal resistance was over 6 in the best case and 1 up to 20 milliohms per cell. Uh, I probably crashed this battery otherwise abused it and this was definitely dead. It's nice to see that some manufacturers and vendors are beginning to list references to internal resistance in the actual specs of their products. Here is the Turnigy Nanotech 2200 milliamp hour 3 cell pack that I just tested. You'll note among the specs are the internal impedance or the internal resistance. They've listed as as low as 1.2 milliohms. I hope this was a little used to you. It looks a little dizzying at first, but once you've downloaded the spreadsheet at the link below, uh, you're easily able to just fill in the first few columns. The spreadsheet will do the rest and keep track of it for you. Google Drive is a great place to keep these for sharing and for security. Uh, access from any uh, workstation or mobile device that is capable of doing it. Uh, PM me any questions and uh, hope you have a good time with it. Happy flying. Take care of those lipos.